Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. Shout out to all my tea sippers out there. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your tea cups ready because you already know this tea is what? Piping hot. Hey, tea sippers. Good morning. I hope you guys are doing good today. So I wanted to talk about just all the craziness that is going on. Today is December 1st, so we are in a new month. And we only have a, sh- and we only have a few short weeks of 2020. And me personally, I'm so ready for 2020 to be over, okay? Not saying that 2021 is going to be any better, honey, because I know they're going to use it to usher in a bunch of nonsense. But I'm so over 2020, okay? So what is going down right now is that I want to come on here and have a real conversation about just... All of these young black male rappers that are being killed. I mean, it is just ridiculous the amount of rappers that have died this year, especially due to gun violence. At this point in time, it seems like rapping starting to be the number one cause of death amongst black men, especially in the damn industry. Okay, so if you guys don't know, um, over the weekend, I was doing a live stream and I was made aware while I was on live that a young rapper from the Bay had gotten killed. At that point, I didn't know how to pronounce his name because I never heard of him. I was calling him Little Yase, but I found out his name is Little Yase. And he was killed. He went to the studio with his homeboys, and basically they were in there working on some music. He left, and somehow he got shot between him leaving and saying he's going to come back. So it's really disturbing, and so a lot of questions are arising. I'm going to go ahead and play you guys this news clip. Go ahead and check this out, and I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary. Died after being shot early Saturday morning in Dublin has been identified as an up-and-coming Bay Area rapper. 26-year-old Alexander Mark Antonio Jr. went by the nickname Lil Yace. The San Francisco resident was dropped off at a Pleasanton hospital suffering from multiple gunshot wounds. He later died at Eden Medical Center a few hours later. Dublin Police Services say they located a crime scene near the Dublin Pleasanton BART station. No arrests have been made. All right, so you guys just saw that news clip a little yase. So TMZ reached out to a few of his friends, and this is what his friends are saying. Um, they're saying friends tell TMZ that they're baffled about what happened and that Yase had no enemies and no one saw this coming. He was reportedly hanging out with his friends at a recording studio in at a recording studio in Marine County Friday night when he left on his own around 11:30 p.m. saying he'd be right back. The shooting occurred over 50 miles away about an hour and a half later. So, you know, this whole thing is disturbing. Obviously, somebody has to know something because where the shooting took place, um, they picked him up and took him to the hospital and just dropped him off and bolted. So, again, somebody has to know something, but no information is being reported as of now. So that is really disturbing. Then earlier today, um, I was being tagged and sent a video of a rapper from the East Coast. His name is Triple Beans. And basically... He was killed. Now, his video is so damn disturbing. Um, You see him. He's walking to his car to go get into his car. And two masked gunmen literally come out of nowhere. They come from another car. And they literally just air this man out. Okay? Now, y'all not don't be knowing what type of guns folks use. I'm not a damn detective. But those had to be some pretty powerful bullets. They had to be a pretty powerful gun because he was getting shot so much. His body was rolling down the street. So disturbing. In broad daylight, this man was executed. Just like how they had killed FBG Duck, how they shot him in broad daylight. You know, this is just getting very, very just it's it's very disturbing. You know, and I don't want to show you guys that video. It's being shared all over social media. But I am going to show you guys a news clip. I want you guys to go ahead and watch this news clip. And I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary. A new video shows a man killed in the street. CBS 2's Corey James reports. In a matter of seconds, life changed for the man in this video. As 29-year-old Corey Thompson turns his back to get into his black Range Rover, tragedy happens. We're freezing that graphic moment, showing two men firing multiple rounds, killing the local rap artist. But here you see the suspects taking off and hopping into their getaway SUV, leaving the scene along Avon Avenue in Newark. That shooting happened Friday afternoon, and by Sunday evening, a candlelight memorial sat under a sign where people honored Thompson. It's a sight all too familiar for Joseph Miller. He has lived here for nearly 40 years and hate seeing the rise in crime. It was just Thanksgiving, um, went two days ago, and it's like, yeah, I just forgot. You're giving thanks and then this happened, you know what I mean? I don't understand. Since Thompson was gunned down, there have been several shootings in Newark. Friday night, police say a 12-year-old boy was hit by a bullet while inside his own apartment on 17th Avenue. Then Saturday night, investigators tell us a 14-year-old girl was shot on 15th Street. 
is extremely alarming. Sharif Aminhotep is with Newark Anti-Violence Coalition. His organization has spent years in countless neighborhoods working to combat gun crime. Now he is calling on more leaders and community members to step up and help. We can't say Black Lives Matter when the police kill us and be silent and quiet when we're killing one another. So black lives has to matter to us here in North New Jersey. Public Safety Director Anthony Ambrose and Mayor Ross Baraka were both unavailable to answer questions about a city not only plagued by coronavirus, but also crime. And Newark police are actively following leads on all cases. However, at this time, specific details on suspects involved are not being released. Okay, so you guys just watched that news clip. Now, if this is not bad enough, Today on trending as well, and he's trending right now as I'm making this video. This is what's so disturbing about it. There's a Detroit rapper, and his name is Paid Will. He's from a group called The Band Gang, and so he was killed, and that's being talked about all over social media. But what's even more disturbing is that just a few months ago, his fellow bandmate was also killed. This is the second member from their crew to have been killed. There was another rapper called Jizzle P., and he was murdered in September. And now Paid Will has been killed. And both of these men, I believe Jizzle was 25 and Paid is like 26 years old. You know, all these men are under the age of 30. And this is just extremely, extremely disturbing that we've had so many rappers killed this year. You know, we can even talk about King Von, who is probably like the biggest, you know, known out of all of these people. But one thing I can say is this, and I know a lot of times people do not like to get esoterical or even spiritual about things, but I, you know, I'm not going to change my stance. I definitely believe in energy. And one thing I can say is that a lot of these rappers were rapping about a lot of low vibrational stuff. People don't like to talk about it because that's what sells music. That's what the record labels are pushing. But when I go and I listen to Triple Beams, very talented brother. I mean, he could rap. And he has songs called I Want You Dead on My Ops. Y'all go ahead and check this out. So that is his song. That is energy, you guys. That is negative energy. You cannot make a song saying that you want to see other black men, regardless if they're your ops or whatever. You want to see other young black men killed. And that energy came back to him. You know, you have to watch the vibrations and the things that you put out there. And like I always say, the power of the tongue is very real. You can speak life or you can speak death. And when you're constantly immersed in negativity and death, these are the things that happen. When I went to go look up stuff about Little Yase and see, well, what kind of music was he putting out? You know, was he talking about positivity? Was he a conscious rapper? Because I'd never heard of him. He's from the Bay. There's a lot of consciousness in the Bay. Well, no, that's not what he was putting out. He had a song called Demons. Once again, that demon time energy that a lot of these mainstream rappers were also putting out there and were also popularizing this spring. Remember, Tory Lanez, he started the whole demon time movement. You know, so this young boy had a song out called Demons. And again, you're invoking certain things. You're calling on certain entities. Y'all go ahead and check out this song. Little bro, he a heathen. You ain't talking money and we leaving. Like if I send that hit, then I mean it. I just put a dose in my cup, bitch, I'm leaning. So now I want to go listen to Pate Will. You know, and he's probably more popular than the other two. He has a lot of views on social media. A lot of people, you know, do rock with him. And I've heard his name before. Um, I know he did a lot of stunting as well. You know, showing cash and jury. And I don't know what was behind the shooting. I don't know if it was a robbery. I, I have no idea. There's no real details. But again... All everything in the music that we consume nowadays is all about stunting, showing off jury, money, fucking bitches, invoking demons, killing the ops, shooting this person, and I got my gun, and I'm the hardest dude walking. All of that is energy, and I believe all of that energy that's been put out for years now is manifesting. You know, 2020 is definitely a chaotic year. It's a year of revelation, and 
I believe that, they, you know, we're fighting a spiritual war. I've been saying that for months now and people can call me bad shit crazy and, you know, click off the video and go elsewhere because, you know, the truth irritates some people's demons. And I'm fine with that. But I stand by everything I say. There's an energy being put out there. And a lot of these record labels are behind this. They're behind pushing this music. Like I said before, years ago, we went from where we had studio gangsters. You had people like Ice Cube and others who were not from the streets. They were not about that fucking life, but they rapped about it. They talked about it. They glamorized it to the youth. So then what happened? Okay, I grew up in the 90s. I watched this play out with my own eyes. You had guys start joining gangs and gang banging. And I mean, I went to so many funerals in high school. It was insane. All gang violence, all killings. You know, I've watched all this play out as somebody who grew up in the 90s. And that energy never left. All it did was just get worse and worse. And the crazy part is now that a lot of these record labels, they're not even trying to fuck with the studio gangsters anymore. Now they're going to the street and they are literally giving record deals to real gangsters, real people on the streets, real shooters, real people who got beef with ops and all this stuff. So the energy and the vibration of hip hop has totally changed. And this is what is glamorized. This is what is pushed to the youth. And then you have the the negativity of social media that keeps a lot of these beefs up you got people right now wanting Quando Rondo dead and you know trying to instigate shit between him and little Dirk and wanting little Dirk to you know you better go do something he killed your homeboy these people are just feeding and fueling the negativity it's sickening and then as soon as a rapper dies everybody wants to cry foul but what was the energy that they were putting out there I don't see a lot of conscious rappers dropping see this is a conversation y'all are not ready to have I don't see rappers who were talking about uplifting their community and doing the right thing. I don't see them dropping like flies. I don't see rappers like Fat Joe because Fat Joe was never one to talk about that gang shit. He always had more upbeat music, very positive, you know, just fun. Him, Andre 3000, Outkast. I don't see people testing their gangster. You get what I'm saying? So it's about what you put out there. And rest in peace to all these men. Make sure to reiterate that none of these men deserve to lose their lives, you know, because they all had families. I'm sure many of them have children, you know, parents, things like that. The whole situation is sad. I couldn't even imagine you're watching, you know, your loved one be executed in broad daylight in the middle of the street in New Jersey. That is so disturbing to see that, you know. But again, I don't know what all he did in these streets, because like I said, going off of his music, He's talking about he's ready to kill his ops, you know, so this is just really sad. And I hope that this is a wake up call to people in the industry, to people trying to get in the rap game. We got to change stuff around. But unfortunately, a lot of people say that, but they're not really into the positivity. Um, NLE Chopper switched his whole style up. He stole he sold literally 6000 copies <laughs> of his most recent album. That's positive. But when he was talking about, you know what I'm saying, running up on people with choppers and killing folks and doing all that low vibrational shit, oh, he was selling. He was popping. And now that he's turned it around and wants to do something positive, folks ain't really checking for him like that because now it's not fun because we have a sickness where we just enjoy seeing black death and black suffering. We enjoy it. We feast upon it. Not just us. I'm just saying society in general. They enjoy it. And it, I mean, unfortunately, you know, if something doesn't change, there's going to be more rappers falling like flies, you know. So this whole situation is just really disturbing. So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Let me know your thoughts on all of this. How do you guys feel about literally in the past 72 hours, we've had three dead rappers? OK, I mean, this is insane. Even all the stuff that was going on in Texas like two, three weeks ago. We had Mo 3 killed. We had Lil Boosie shot. We had Benny the Butcher shot. Like, this is insane, all of this stuff that's going on. So I want to know everybody's thoughts. If you're not subscribed to my channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Um, you know, make sure you thumbs up the video if you agree. And last but not least, make sure you hit that notification bell so we can be done with the notification squad. So let me know your thoughts on this. Did you listen to any of these guys? Were these guys your favorite rappers? How do you guys feel about this? And how do you guys feel about what is going on in the industry? And do you agree with me that the music has gotten so low vibrational that a lot of this stuff is energy just coming back? You know, everything we manifest comes back tenfold. So you want to think positive and you want to put out positive affirmations. You don't want to be putting out a bunch of negativity because it can meet you at your doorstep. So anyways, y'all, I don't want to make this video too long. Let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Deuces.